Jeremy Corbyn was suspended from the Labour Party after a report came out today showing that there was rampant anti-Semitism in his own party. Now, before you ask why am I talking about UK politics, because generally I talk about politics in the United States. Just bear with me and I'm going to link it to what's happening in the United States right now. So just let's hear the facts first and then we'll talk about the United States. So this report was done by the Equality and Human Rights Commission. It was an 18 month investigation into anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and they found that the party committed unlawful acts of harassment and discrimination. They further say that our analysis points to a culture within the party which, at best, did not do enough to prevent anti-Semitism, and at worst, could be seen to accept it. They further go on to say that they identified serious failings in leadership and an inadequate process for handling anti-Semitism complaints across the Labour Party. We have concluded that there were unlawful acts of harassment and discrimination for which the Labour Party is responsible. Now, this is not the first time that Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party were accused of anti-Semitism, and it probably won't be the last time, but maybe for Jeremy Corbyn because he's now been suspended, and rightfully so. As this article points out, anti-Semitism has dogged Corbyn's leadership, and that there was an accusation that anti-Semitism was rife among his supporters. And while this report doesn't say that everyone in the Labour Party or everyone who supports them is anti-Semitic, because that's simply not true, it does talk about specific instances where anti-Semitism happened within the party and no real action was taken. If you want to get a more in-depth view of those, go ahead and check out my sources in the description down below. So to essentially sum everything up, a report came out that found that the Labour Party was at the very least allowing anti-Semitism in their party, and as a result, the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, was suspended. But now, how do we make the jump from UK politics to US politics? It's actually not as hard as you might think. If you're not super familiar with UK politics, and I'm actually not, so I'm not an expert here, but you could say that they're kind of the progressive wing of politics. Much like the Democrats are those who are progressive in the United States. And countless Democrats have shown support for Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party, including AOC just last year, when she had a lovely phone call with Jeremy Corbyn and then essentially endorsed him and the Labour Party more generally. Now, obviously, just because someone is accused of something doesn't mean they did that. However, Jeremy Corbyn has had a number of accusations brought against him of anti-Semitism, and that did not stop people like AOC and many other Democrats from supporting him in some way. On the other hand, they have no issues talking about how Donald Trump is a straight up white supremacist. AOC literally said that after the first debate just last month. So Donald Trump is a straight up white supremacist who is a Nazi and all of these horrible things, and yet Jeremy Corbyn is completely fine. But it's not just Jeremy Corbyn. They also have room for people like Louis Farrakhan, Linda Sarsour, and even Ilhan Omar, the latter of whom was initially going to be rebuked by the House for anti-Semitic comments, but that actually didn't end up happening. You see, again, last year, Ilhan Omar questioned why there was support for Israel in her own party and suggested it was because they were bought off by Jewish money and more recently suggested that Israel backers had dual allegiances. Both of those things are classically anti-Semitic, saying that you only support Jews because of the money and that there's a dual allegiance there as well. And the House was initially going to point out that this is anti-Semitic and they were going to pass a resolution condemning anti-Semitism. However, in other words, we shouldn't point out her anti-Semitism, even though it's kind of there. Instead, let's call Donald Trump a white supremacist. That's essentially what they said here. And they further demanded that the resolution be changed to include language about Islamophobia, saying that Ms. Omar has faced unconscionable acts as one of two Muslim women in Congress. So rather than look at anti-Semitism, what she actually said, let's pivot, point out that, hey, she's a minority, so let's say this is actually about Islamophobia. The end result was a very watered down anti-hate resolution. Now, again, initially it was going to talk about anti-Semitism because of Ilhan Omar, but her name did not show up at all in the resolution. And in regards to the resolution, this is how Omar responded. It's the first time we have voted on a resolution condemning anti-Muslim bigotry in our nation's history. She seems to be ignoring the fact that this resolution was supposed to be about her own anti-Semitism, and yet she's praising that it's talking about anti-Muslim bigotry. The Democratic Party completely shifted this resolution just so they could defend Ilhan Omar and not have to say she's anti-Semitic. So in this respect, I do think the Democratic Party can be compared to the Labour Party, not just because some of their policies are similar, but because the party leadership just kind of goes along with anti-Semitism within their own ranks. 
Now, unlike Jeremy Corbyn, I don't necessarily think Nancy Pelosi is actually an anti-Semite. I don't think she has said many things to show that it's the case. But as we clearly see here, she is more than willing to brush anti-Semitism under the rug as long as it's to defend one of her own. Again, they continually hang out with Linda Sarsour and Louis Farrakhan and people who are straight up anti-Semites, but as long as they agree with you politically, I suppose that's okay. While at the same time, Donald Trump is this horrible, horrible anti-Semitic Nazi and we cannot allow him in politics whatsoever. That is a huge example of hypocrisy. And this is why I think it's relevant. If the UK Labour Party can have a reckoning and get rid of Jeremy Corbyn, then perhaps there is some hope, albeit a small amount of hope, for the Democratic Party in the United States. Thank you for watching, sharing, and subscribing. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below. Check out one of my other videos that maybe you haven't seen, and I'll see you next time.